Stables CEO Andreas Jawad, who is here to present the company. Welcome. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. As I said, my name is Andreas Jawad. I'm the CEO of Stable Therapeutics. I'm here to tell you a story about Stable Therapeutics and how we believe that we drastically will be able to change how patients in the future will be treated for their back pain. So we are a clinical phase 2B development company with the asset STA363. We have an ongoing clinical phase 2B trial and we work within discogenic back pain. And I would like to state that there are an enormous market gap for this type of patients. There is a lack of effective treatments and I'm going to be discussing it later in the presentation that can we launch a first line treatment that would be able to help millions of patients that would really really benefit both the societal perspective but also the economic perspective. We have an experienced team with the right competence to take this company forward. We are listed on Nasdaq First North since March this year and we are continuously developing the company. So giving you a little bit more in background about our asset towards discogenic back pain, we believe that there are two major components in discogenic back pain that is causing the problem. It's a leakage of inflammatory substances and it's in an instability of the disc segment, which is the rationale for why some patients undergo spinal fusion surgery. The benefit of stable treatment, and it's something that I would like you to remember from this presentation, is that we are targeting the underlying cause of the back pain. Our treatment has the potential to drastically change how patients in the future will be treated, but also has the potential to actually elevate the patient's pain long term. Our treatment works in the way that we inject the substance directly into the disc, where it triggers the cells to produce collagen, and that introduces a transformation into connective tissue. This stabilizes the segment and eliminates the possibility of disc leakage. We are basing our concept on a known drug substance, which gives us a quicker time to market at a lower risk, both in the early development, but also in the, in the coming trials, both in the clinical phase 2b trial, but also looking forward into the clinical phase 3 trial. A majority of clinical phase 3 assets is actually being shut down, not to lack of efficacy, but to, to unknown and, and, and meaning uh, been shut down due to factors related to safety. And beha us having a known drug substance means that the risk of side effects would be much, much lower. As stated before, target the underlying cause is very important for us. And we also aim for a durable pain relief with a permanent effect. So this is a single injection with a lifelong permanent effect. This transformation into connective tissue is something that we have seen in the preclinical work, uh, in our animal models, but more importantly in our first clinical phase 1b trial, where we were able to assess before treatment and after treatment by MRI images that we actually saw this transformation into connective tissue. So a very concrete uh, rationale, we have proof of mechanism that we actually can achieve this transformation, and that's what we would like to assess in the coming clinical phase 2b trial. Talk a little bit about the market potential. I was saying in the beginning there is a large unmet medical need for this type of treatments, and it really sees in the number of patients currently suffering. There is more than 100 million patients suffering from discogenic back pain or genitive disc disease in US, Japan, and EU5. And out of these, we believe that around 30 million patients would be the first target market for us. It's based on that we believe that the typical patient for us suffers from moderate disc degeneration, which is around 30% of the cases. A typical patient for us is also rather young. A patient suffering from disc disease is somewhere between 20 to 50 years old, which means that it's really a working population. There is a large uh, societal aspect of this as well. Can we get these patients back to work? That would be very beneficial both for them but also for society. Looking at the incidence, we have approximately 11, 11 and a half million patients that every year gets diagnosed with chronic genitive disc disease and out of these we believe that around three and a half million would be suitable for stable treatment. Talking a little bit about competition, I was stating that their lack of treatment options for this type of patient, that there really is a large problem here because physiotherapy 
and analgesics or painkillers is only effective in around 30% of the cases. You have spinal surgery, which is available for around 1% of all the patients, leaving almost 70% of all the patients without effective treatments, suffering for years and years. We read a Dutch stu uh, study where the average uh, pain duration for this type of patient that joined the study was 10 years. So it's really something that can we help these types of patients that would be very, very beneficial. We'd also like to sta state regarding spinal surgery that the drawbacks of it is, of course, it's, it's expensive. It has a lot of risks compared, connected to it and a lot of side effects. But most importantly, it's not available for the large portion of patients that is currently suffering. And that's what we would like to offer, a simple treatment that can target the large portion of the patients that is currently not improving with physiotherapy and analgesics. So competition for us lays in other research-based companies, and the main focus is, is stem cells. There are a couple of companies that is currently also conducting clinical development, but there is no approved uh, drugs on the market currently. And what we see as the main benefit with our treatment is the simplicity of it. It's a single injection. It's a robustness. Uh, we have seen in the preclinical models, in the clinical model, that we achieve this transformation, and we're going to have this transformation staying over time. So it's something that works uh, for the patient's entire life. So, uh, we listed a company earlier this year in, in March, and we have been full focused on our clinical development since then. And I must say, even in this very challenging environment with the coronavirus, that we've been able to successfully develop the study going forward. We have started the clinics in all the three countries that we aim to conduct a trial in, the Netherlands, Russia, and Spain. We got all the ethical approvals, the regulatory approvals, the local ethical approvals. Uh, we started clinics and we treated the first patients. So we're very pleased to say that we, we're staying on track. Of course, it's, it's a more challenging to do trials in this environment, but we've been able to, to progress uh, the program forward, which I'm very proud of. The goal is to be able to give top-line results in H1 2022. The aim of the trial is to demonstrate decrease in pain and increase in function. And these two are the main components that both the patients, but also payers and surgeons and pain specialists are looking for in this type of treatments. We're going to follow the patients for up to 12 months. It's a double-blinded study, which means that neither we nor the patients or the physician treating the patients knows if they receive active or uh, placebo treatment, which is very important for, uh, for the validity of the, of the data. We're going to include around 100 valuable patients, which means that we aim to recruit 126 patients in total to uh, have a higher number for, for dropouts. Shouldn't talk too much about the team, but we have an experienced, dedicated team with knowledge spanning from early pharmaceutical development to large clinical trials. We have business development, we have financing, and we have the competences we need to be able to develop uh, the company going forward. We also have a lot of advisors that supports the company continuously and believes in the concept. So what's, what's going to be happening through, through next year? Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to continue working actively with the clinical phase two trial. We're going to recruit patients. We aim to f uh, recruit all the patients during next year. We will be able to give some sort of blinded uh, interim results. Uh, for example, relates to, to sa safety, uh, the usage of the product, etc. We're going to continue to strengthen uh, a stable position, both internationally and naturally, with additional advisory board, both in the US and in Europe. Uh, we're going to continue with the dialogue through the stock market with, with this that we're doing with Biostock, but also with our concept Inside Stable, where we give you more insights to what we're doing. We're going to continue to strengthen the team with uh, external collaborations. Uh, we aim to expand the team with more members. And we're going to be preparing for, for a coming deal with regulatory roadmaps, with market access, health economics, deal structures. There's a lot of things that's going to be happening uh, through the next year. And to summarize this, why, why do we think that stable is, is an interesting investment? And I would say that it's, it's a huge medical need. There is really a lack of effective treatments. We have something that is really targeting the underlying cause of the back pain that has the potential to make the patient long-term pain elevated. We have patents uh, covering uh, the intervention in the key markets. Very promising results from the phase one trial. We have a phase two trial that is ongoing, recruiting patient, pushing this forward. 
We have the potential to be the first drug on the market. And I would say, from my perspective, a very attractive valuation on a clinical phase 2B asset. So thank you very much for, for listening and I'm looking forward to, to the questions. Good, and thank you for the presentation. Um, you are currently focused on degenerative disc disease in the lower back. Do you intend to uh, broaden this indication in the future? Does it have potential within other indications? I would say that uh, degenerative disc disease in the lumbar area is, is the larger market. That's where you find most of the patients and that's a larger component, uh, portion of, uh, of this problem. But you see similar uh, problems in, in the neck and that's something that we've been discussing previously. But that would be an extension after we've shown that this actually works and, and launch it on the, product, on the market. So it's, it's the lumbar area that is the main focus, but there definitely is potential for, uh, for indication broadening later on in the development. So changing tracks a little bit and talking about the financial side instead. Yes. Um, your subscription has started today in your uh, warrant tier one. Can you tell us a little bit about this funding? Of course. So we have a warrant uh, currently traded uh, and there is a, some challenges with it. Uh, it has a stri strike price that currently is, is above what we are traded on the stock market. But we see that uh, with the investors we discuss with, there is, there is a large interest in the company. So I feel, feel confident that we will be able to, to fund the company going forward uh, and to develop it all the way through. And I think also important to, to point out here is that we, we've been able to, to do a lot of stuff since we listed the company. We've been able to, to go according to plan. We've been able to start the trials. It's really we are on a good good progress and I think that the fundamental value in the company is, is still here and we, we really have a great uh, journey ahead of us. But you mentioned here the, the phase uh, to be study. What would a positive outcome in that study mean for you as a company? That's, that's really what we've been, been working on for, for the last, last five years since we founded the company. So it's, it's really the milestone that's going to give us the possibility to, to enter into potential partnering agreement with, with larger companies. And we were at BioEurope plus two weeks ago and presented and we saw a much higher interest in the company now compared to previously. So there is a large interest in phase 2B assets. It's rather close to the market. Uh, and we believe that, can we show that data, there would definitely be a lot of companies wanting to, to partner with us for the next, uh, next step. Right, but we look forward to following yeah, that. Thank and you. thank you so much for coming. Yeah, very happy to be here.